Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Perry with Premier Guitar here at the Franklin Theater in Franklin, Tennessee uh, with Pokey Lafarge, which I'm really, really stoked about, man. Pokey, so, so good to meet you and do this. I'm a huge fan of your craft. It's an honor. Man, really? um, thanks. You, uh, you've been blowing my mind lately, man. I've been kind of going down that rabbit hole and just getting into it because I guess uh, for me, it's like so foreign from what I would naturally play. Like, um, obviously you don't sound like other musicians doing things these days. So like, uh, was this something that you were always into or was it like a... Um, you know, I, I guess you could say I, I find it uh, quite normal to be different. Uh, I, it's kind of funny because I grew up in a town called Normal, Illinois. <laughs> um, it was pretty easy to stand out. Maybe I just got used to it and liked it at, at the beginning. Um, you know, um, but starting right there with what kind of like my inf big influences are, one of the main components of something that really stirs me or catches my attention, is something that does sound like nothing else. Um, my heroes are, I would, I would argue, are ones that are like almost instantly identifiable and incomparable, you hmm. know, whether it be authors or, or, or singers. Sure, yeah, know? I've read that you're a big Kerouac fan. Uh, Bukowski's probably yeah. my my guy, you know. If, um, once you, you once you get past the dick jokes, you know. Yeah, it's a little. Some uh, of it's a little much. I'm it's a little harsh. I think that stuff was just used to kind of because it was shock. Shock for sure. You yeah, know, they the they kind of really pushed that on him. Uh, he was just trying to make a living. But um, you know, Tom Waits is probably my favorite composer. It's kind of funny I say that because <laughs> I'm playing guitar, not a piano. But uh, you know, he plays guitar too. But um, yeah, just just stuff like that. And so I was always great, always, when I found somebody that really was, was different and uh, I, I, I was kind of like, you can look and say like, well, if there's nobody else like them you, and they're almost like incomparable and um, unable to be imitated, you still find thousands of people sometimes imitating them. But even further, um, I was, I've always been interested in the people that like barely anybody knows, you know. For every Elvis, there's a thousand other people that nobody's ever heard. For every, you know, James Brown and all those. So I, I liked uh, those B-sides, those deep cuts from people that only recorded seven tracks in Cleveland in 1965. You know <laughs> what I mean? Stuff like that. So um, there I find even more like weirder stuff and it's just a greater knowledge and um, I believe it's, it all comes out. It's a cool thing. I think you've kind of uh, been able to f find your place. In a, in a musical mix. I think it's awesome, man. But anyway, let's talk guitars. This I know, is I'm a, ranting. Yeah, I was like, give no, me no, talking, no. man. Like, um, this is your number one. I've seen you with this a bunch of times. Yep. 46, right? Yeah. 1946. Nice 1946. Right. It's an Epiphone Spartan. Uh, black walnut back and sides. Lord, well, down um, to the war and back. It's all my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, seen, yeah. I've seen some cracks. Has it been, re been repaired? Uh, yeah. A couple uh, spots. We're here in Nashville, Tennessee, technically. That's where this happened. Oh. I showed up at the airport and there was this, mm. this crack right here. This was all clean and perfect like five years ago. <laughs> yeah, from like me hitting it and you know, doing shows and picks and stuff. I know you typically carry a couple different guitars. I've seen you play in little parlors and stuff like that, but for this tour, this is the yeah. only guitar you have on the road, right? It is. I used to play a lot of parlors. My favorite one that I have is uh, I have a it was hard to get a year placed on it, but somewhere between 1895 and 1905, the Washburn made by Wayne and Healy, which actually just makes harps now. The big Stand harps. harps, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's Brazilian rosewood back and sides. It was really beautiful, great finger picking guitar. So I played parlors at the beginning because I used to play a lot of finger style stuff. That was kind of my entrance into guitar playing, besides because I wanted something else to write songs on. I used to play mandolin and Banjo fiddle. And stuff, yeah. yeah, all that stuff. Um, but then as styles change and, and things like that, you know, I went to a flat top playing more bluegrass and all the time, but, um, you know, like Dreadnought. But as I got into, I guess, my entrance into the arch top world um, was probably just, you know, what became a few years obsession of, of traditional jazz and different shoot, offshoots of that. Sure, gypsy and, jazz and all that stuff, yeah, yeah, and it's kind of stuck around from that. I find it a pretty versatile guitar. Um, you know, it's not too bassy where I find flat types from my, my style would be too low end. Where this kind of suffers for the low end when you're not plugged into an amp, it does really cut and it has a great mid-range. Mm. Um, you'll see it really kind of booms. So I'm yeah, playing it's a, very mid-rangey, but I mean, you have a stand-up bass player, so I guess. <laughs> well, you know, but you still want to. 
I use my thumb a lot, which I think comes from the finger picking sure. stuff I used to use. You know, if you're playing an F, you know, you're hitting that to get that other F. Huh. Um, but, Very uh, cool. How did you come to own this? A friend of mine in when I was living in St. Louis. Uh, I knew that I was looking for the right art stuff and you know the right guitar can kind of be hard to find sometimes. For sure. And, it's a never ending uh, quest to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, this was this was the one he had and, and was willing to sell. So that's awesome. Got lucky. Did this pick up is this something that you selected for this guitar or did that come in it when you got it or? Well so as guitars can be hard to to the right guitar can be hard to find, so can the right gear and that's a whole nother wormhole, right? Oh, yeah. Rabbit hole. So um, it took years to figure out the right pickup. I think I've got the right one. So I was trying different kind of, you know, jack pickups underneath the bridge, um, different kinds of surface pickups. But um, I wanted something that would help to bring out the lows. So I use this. This is a hand wound PAF by Kent Armstrong. Crazy. Okay, mix cool. them, I think, up in Maine or Vermont or something like that. You can find uh, I was looking at arstop.com at what different people would put arstop um, use for pickups, and that was a suggestion. Actually, I got that suggestion from Joel Patterson. Right. You guys should do one on Joel. That guy's ridiculous. That's a Chicago crazy guitar player. Um, when you guys go there for the Cubs game, you should yeah. look him up. But um, so another thing, I'm not sure if you know, but I, I tune a whole step down. I did know that. Ah, okay. Are you doing that for singing range or for just the fullness of the sound out of your guitar? More for singing. Mm -hmm, sure. um, I like to sing in, in B flat, and but I don't like playing in B flat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Transposing it's, all that is tricky. Yeah, 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 and I like singing in E flat, but I don't like playing in E flat. I mean, it's just because from the finger picking stuff, you need open strings. Sure. And um, let's be honest, it's easier to play in the string keys as it is in the you know E flats and. And you're keys. singing at the same time, so it's. You know, you got to give yourself a little bit of a break there. You know? Yeah, but because I do that, I, I use heavier strings. I've, I'm looking at these and they're pretty manly. What, yeah. are, what strings are we working with here? They're not. Well, that's a 13. Oh wow! And they're not completely flat, right? They're. Uh, they're. Uh, these are these are half rounds. Half rounds. Okay. Cool. Brought to you by Diodario. <laughs> 13 uh, on the high and 56 on the low. Wow. Okay, that's a pretty meaty set of. Guitar strings. Yeah, yeah, but because it's tuned down a whole step, you know, if they were thin strings, it would just gives you a little wiggle room for sure. Yeah. Yeah, you give it a fuller tone that way. Man, so that's a beautiful guitar. I can't believe you managed to do yeah. all that in, uh, in five years' time. But yeah, I guess a lot you're... of road, a lot of shows. Yeah. All right, cool. And so you have like nothing for pedals. I noticed that you have a, a tone bone pre, which those are pretty popular. Why did you go with a tone bone as opposed to maybe like a an aura or something like that, like a I, Did you A, B a bunch, or is that just something you had? Yeah, totally. I mean, you know, you, you, uh, you have to experiment. And um, I, I came across it from Fats Kaplan, who's a multi-instrumentalist, actually from right here in Nashville. Um, he was using it when we were on tour with Jack White. We opened up a few shows on his Blunderbuss tour. It was a few years ago, and I just got that thing. So what do you know how long it took me to make my decision? Um, but he was using it to plug his fiddle and his mandolin into that. And then he was plugging it into a Fender Twin. And I think I just heard him out in the house in big loud rooms. I was like, man, it sounds so full. It sounds so acoustic. How is he getting that what, Which what I, with what I assumed was just a DI at the time? Um, so I asked him, and he told me that was a setup. So now I use the Tone Bone Pre. Again, it has a like, nice headroom to it. It's really warm um, sort of pre's in it. Um, a lot of EQs on it, which helps. Sure. Um, although with a great, you know, great sound guys and stuff like that, you just I go pre usually and let them do it instead gotcha. of post EQ. Um, but I use that to kind of get some of the crunchiness and the um, like the acousticity of, mm -hmm. of this guitar. You know, with which if I'm like maybe like swinging a tune or something. You're probably just hearing that through the amp right now, but. The DI and then this amp, which is um, a Magnetone Twilighter, which they make those in St. Louis now. Oh, cool. So I do a blend. Gotcha. So from the tone bone, you're go sending direct to the front of the house, and then you're also running to the amp. Yeah. Cool. So in your yeah. monitor mix, are you hearing 
both or do you prefer to hear just one or the other? So uh, in the monitor mix, I get just a DI and I have the amp behind me. So cool. it's like two monitors, surround sound. And again, I use the two channels for um, for a big sound sure. in the house. Yeah, that's always going to sound better. Yeah, sure. and I was thinking about using some other pedals. I want to experiment like, say, for instance, um, uh, with the Strymon. Yeah, I think that is that the the Big Sky for Maybe, the Reverb yeah. and the El, El Capistano for the delay mm -hmm. or vice versa. Um, Are you wanting to experiment with like a like slapback kind of sounds or just, just experiment? Really, yeah, just play with it for sure. You yeah. know, and, and and also for a bigger sort of like yeah, full dreamier sound, just like really really full. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to try that, but you know, for now I have um, the reverb on here, and of course a lot of you guitar nuts out there, amp guys and gals will know that, you know, these are really known for its trend. Is that how you ended up with the Magnetonics? Because looking for that trend circuit? No. Really? No, no, not at all. Um, I was looking for an amp that had big... Uh, a lot of headroom. Headroom, yeah. so that it was clean. And um, I just got lucky with the fact that they make them in St. Louis, and I was living in St. Louis, <laughs> and, uh, you know, somehow got, got tipped off to them. Is that speaker stock, or is that something that you... Now this is all, yeah, it's all, all cool. yeah, check them out. They, they make bigger ones with two speakers. This just has one. One 12 inch? One 12, yeah. Well, one guitar, one amp, that's not a, a lot of crazy stuff. Um, but there's a huge variation in sounds when you're playing. And I noticed there's no volume control on the guitar, so it's not like you're rolling off tone or volume. Well, I it, actually. Ah. Uh, so. so Aha, uh -huh. okay, yeah, okay. Tone and, and volume here, yeah. So are you, is that something you're adjusting? while you're playing, or do you yeah. usually kind of keep it set? Accent? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, per song, sure, yeah. Yeah, but uh, you know, I use a, a pick, so I have a boost on there if I'm soloing, but also, um, you know, I'll, I'll play with my fingers sometimes for certain finger picking tunes, and I'll just- kick on a boost? I'll just turn the volume up on the amp, and then again, if I'm soloing and I need that much more, yeah, I'll use the boost. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't tell you how much we appreciate you letting us uh, talk to you and talk to the rest of your band. All right, I'll see man. you soon. Thanks, Perry. Now we're downstage a bit with Adam Hoskins, the guitar player for Pokey. Um, Good to be here. Man, I'm stoked you're doing this. I understand that you, uh, you've you seen a couple rundowns. Yeah, actually just a few weeks ago, I was like, I was going down the YouTube hole and I discovered a few that you had done and I was like, oh, and then you reached out and I thought it was a wonderful thing. Yeah, Thanks man, I'm, I'm stoked out. to do this. Super you guys cool. are great. Thanks. I've watched your uh, a Tiny Desk concert probably like 10 million times. It's so. pretty fun. Well, let's talk about this bad boy. This is uh, a, yeah, a this antique is, beauty. This is my number one. And, uh, you know, it's the first guitar I ever bought from uh, making money uh, from playing guitar. I purchased this. And, uh, and I bought it in Philadelphia. And it's a 1939 Gibson L12. Does it not freak you out to run with a guitar that old and valuable? I, I feel like I'm giving it life. Okay, you know, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. And so uh, that's my justification. And also, I love playing it so much that. Uh, if it dies in combat, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Well, at least at this point in the game, there's plenty of footage and photos of you playing it. That's true. It, and it, it's been given a good life. I think I've done close to 800 shows with this guitar. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, and it still looks like it's in pretty not great bad. shape. Uh, there's a little checking, but other yeah, than that. Yeah, and a couple pick scrapes yeah, here sure. and there. And actually, the pick guard, I should say, is not original. I got sure. a, a repro done here in uh, Nashville uh, at uh, Groom. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. They reproed what the original looked like. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those guys are awesome. And, and used, I think, time correct materials as well, oh, which is pretty, or something yeah, crazy. pretty yeah. interesting. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so, how are you amp, uh, capturing the sound? For, I, I have a contact pickup on it, and okay. it's a K and K pickup. Wait, it makes it sound really big and resonant. And, uh, it can be an issue sometimes around the 250 range. Oh yeah. Uh, and I, apparently, that's a, a K and K arch top type of thing. And uh, but we work with it, and especially with good sound guys, they can notch that out real easily. Heck yeah. So how did you find this? Was it, uh, it was just in an... I was traveling across the country and I was looking for a large body arch top. This is a 17 inch arch top and I was looking for this or even bigger. And, uh, and it took about three months to find what I wanted. And, uh, do you remember what you gave for it? Uh, I did. Uh, yeah, I, I spent 3000 on it. And, That's uh, reasonable. But came with the original case, which I don't tour with. Okay. Uh, but because that's got to be disintegrating by now. Yeah, right? well, like a, also, um, you know, if this bad boy ever did bite the dust, knock on wood, uh, I could sell that case for, you know, a couple yeah. hundred bucks here that's and there. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right on, man. This is awesome. So you've also got a pretty Spartan setup, although you do play another guitar. It's true, yeah. I got a, a second guitar, but I, I avoid pedals. As, as this is interesting. I, okay. I, I, I grew up playing pedals, and they messed up on me so much that I was like, you know what? Not I'll just learn to play guitar instead. So even, like, <laughs> what about stuff like uh, compression or, like, things that might... 
I like that stuff in the studio, but for live, I like it to be a little, a little grittier. Rock. Yeah, cool. just because uh, like when I see live music, I like to see that, and I, I hope that other yeah. people do too. So I, that probably lends itself to you guys' sound a little more anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. does. Yeah, more acoustic variety. Yeah, totally. All right, well, let's talk about, what, yeah. tell me about this bad boy. That one. That is uh, my 1962 Guild Starfire. And, uh, you know, I had a repro for a long time growing up, and when I was playing in rock and roll bands and stuff, I played that, and then when I became an adult, Guitar player, I bought the original. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, it's pretty cool. They, they call it a poor man's Gibson. It's like a, you know, what, a 355 or a 345? Somewhere in there, yeah. Well, uh, I guess it's got the single cut, yeah. yeah. And, uh, um, when you were playing in rock and roll bands, did you ever have problems with that thing howling on you? Yes, it's big and yes. But, <laughs> but the newer ones, like, uh, I guess they were semi hollow body. It had a block right down the middle. The new ones? So, or yeah, these? The, the new ones. This, so this one is, is fully hollow. It is fully hollow, yeah. No it kidding. Is, like, and if you were to get it up to uh, rock and roll levels, it would certainly oh, have. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> oh man, do you have uh, much trouble keeping it in tune with that uh, tram? No. Is that Bixby? And, yeah, it's no, the it's a guild, it's a, it's okay, a guild yeah. one. It's a, the original that came on the guitar. Uh, and no, I don't have any trouble with it, even though it doesn't have the bar of the new uh, Bixby's. Um, it works just fine. Yeah, cool. I ended up updating the bridge on it. It's a tunematic bridge. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. But I have the original bridge in the case. You'd imagine a guitar that old is probably kind of hunkered in by now, and like. I think, yeah, you know, that's why I fell in love with that particular guitar is because uh, it's player's grade. Someone gave it a lot of love throughout its life and it, uh, it's it's stays, it stays in tune. Yeah, it's uh, nice. Have you had to have anything done to it other than like setups or are those pickups original? Those pickups are original. I think everything's original other than the tuners. The tuners were replaced in sure, its life, yeah. which is completely fine. But no, I've never had to have anything done to it. Uh, I think I cleaned uh, the pots one time, but you know, just general maintenance. I'm guessing two volumes, two tones. That's correct, pickup. yeah, cool. one for each pickup. And when you're playing, are you living kind of just in between, or are you m moving around quite a bit? I live in between, and then when I do like uh, solo stuff on the low end, I'll switch to the bridge pickup, and so it'll sound very surfy. Spank. Spank. Yeah, 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 pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> and then you're playing through this tiny little fender over uh, here. Yeah, you know, I, I was bringing vintage amps on the road for years, and I had so many problems with them, and uh, I wanted to use them for studio purposes more than anything else and, sure. and so I left them in the studio and I use them for recordings and whatnot but this guy surprised me you know it's a $500 amp and I uh, took it out on the road and it's worked pretty well and it sounds pretty good do you know how many watts that little buddy 15 is? I believe 15? Yeah. yeah and my favorite feature about those amps is the uh, attenuation on it you can drive the uh, the preamp tubes to get a nice distortion out of it, but then you can have them play really quiet. Hmm. It's like a, that's awesome. In a live setting, it can be helpful to be quieter. Yeah, I've noticed <laughs> uh, uh, on that song uh, "Goodbye Barcelona," mm -hmm. that lead. I'm guessing that's you. Yeah, yeah. That's a yeah. That sound more than any other sounds in your music uh, is crispy. Yeah, it's a, it's a little hot. It's not distorted, but it's not fuzz, and it's yeah. like, just kind of sounds like a really wide open amp. Is that what that is? It wasn't on, no. It was actually an Epiphone amp from what I can recall. It was because uh, Epiphone made amps back in the day, and it had a really good trim on it. And uh, the producer at the time, he he wanted to try it. and But we did it with a Telecaster. And I, do, I normally don't play Telecasters, but I think for that particular solo, we, yeah. we wanted to accomplish yeah. that. That, that one's always kind of stuck out to me, so I thought that was really <laughs> Very cool. Very cool, yeah. So I noticed earlier when I was looking at your amp that your master is down actually pretty low. Yeah, I keep it quiet. And then you got the bass kind of rocked up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I know, obviously, you're wearing your arch top, but, and that's d just direct in front of house, right? Correct, um, uh, yeah. Just is there it. any way before I let you go, we could hear this guild just to, um, yeah. just to oh, hear that amp? Yeah, of course, yeah. Definitely. I'm curious about a $500 amp, man. Try it out, cool. yeah. Plus, you could find it anywhere. If, if, if something happened to you on the road, you could always that You it know, down. that's one of the universal things about having a new amp is that you can always replace it, and it's yeah. just fine, but yeah. It's a general clean tone, and then this higher pickup, I'll do... kind of has a, a telly sound it, it to it, It does have a spanky you know? telly kind of vibe. kind of fun, and then it's real dark up here, like pretty do smoother stuff, you know? That would work. Wow, pretty yeah, cool. that thing sounds pretty great. Notice yeah. the action's a little high on that. You're you got some manly hands. There, I but. I like thick strings and I like high I was, action. I was just gonna ask like, what what strings I, are you running? Uh, these are thirteens. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, <laughs> they're actually the same on the acoustic. Yeah, I was I gonna say. 13s on all the... <laughs> Silly and this manly. guitar can handle it though. You yeah. know, it's like 
it works. Well, hell yeah, man. I really, really appreciate you taking the time to talk hey, to us. Hey, thank you. Thanks and, uh, for I'm going to talk to Joey and uh, All right. see you guys Sounds next good. Show. Thank you. Okay, last but not least, we got Joey playing the stand-up bass. You're also tour manager too, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. For, for the time being. Yeah. You're doing all kinds of <laughs> duties on this. Well, man, that's an instrument I know literally nothing about, yeah. so you, you'll have to walk me through this. But it's beautiful. Damn. Yeah, just a simple setup. I just got a piezo pickup down here on the bridge, and it runs straight through to my... Uh, tuner pedal and then straight into my mark bass amp cool i mean why did you land on the mark bass amp of all the um i tried it out years ago and it was just super clean tone I was gonna I say, it sounds just like your mm -hmm. bass yeah you know if i was playing electric bass or something i'd probably like something with tubes in it or something but with acoustic i like just a you know as natural as i can go and it seems to do a pretty good job Definitely natural. So are these strings? No, no. Is this like a big nylon? So yeah, these are gut strings. Okay. So real gut. And then these are gut wrapped in a steel, in you know. Steel, sure. What year is this instrument? Uh, this one's not old. It's not old like the guitars, but uh, it's 2008, I believe. Gotcha. But yeah, I got a couple old old Ks at home, but I, I use this on the road. That's your, let it get beat your, up. Yeah, or, I've seen you play this one a bunch. Yeah, yeah. I guess plus you're not you know, if if something happens, you're not mm -hmm. out too much. But, right, right. Um, <laughs> is the uh, is the worst thing about playing this instrument carrying it around? <laughs> um, I it guess it is. Airports, right? I guess it is, but it's really not that bad. I can, you know you totally get used to it and don't yeah. even think about it. For the airport, I actually have one of those Chadwick folding bases. So oh, a nice cool. travel base you can pull. It's got like a hinge you. that folds down. Yeah, yeah the yeah. neck folds in the back. So, so with your piezo, is it, I know there's a lot of different brands. Was there, you know, did you have to A/B that quite a bit? Or um, just I've I've tried a few over the years, and I just I fell on this Underwood here. It's it's pretty common. A lot of guys use these, and they're just they, they always seem to sound good. You know, I've, I've tried um, the Upton pickup before, and it was pretty similar. But the first one I ever had was great. I loved it tried to get another one and then I could never get the same tone out of it. So I ended up getting one of these and this is maybe my second or third one. They, they, they wear out eventually, but. No kidding. Get yeah. shaken they, up a little bit. Yeah, travel. they get maybe kind of dull or lose a little volume or maybe maybe it was something else, but I ended up just buying a fresh one every, every few years, I guess. So, so with this kind of setup, once your sound, your, you get your sound at sound check and you don't really have to fiddle with much, right? There's not like a volume or tone control on a bass. Or yeah, no, like I mean, sometimes certain songs I might have to, you know, adjust a little knob or something, but huh. but yeah, it's nothing. I just have a, a pedal to mute my sound in between songs and nothing else really. Uh, dumb question, but uh, is, is this something you're tuning with just? Uh, this is actually another tuner that I just keep on there, like. Um, just, it's so handy. I, yeah, I mean, like if I'm if I'm backstage before I get set up on stage, I don't have the pedal yet. I can just tune yeah, backstage tune really back there, easy. Sure. And sometimes I compare to make sure they're both accurate. So that's great. Well, man, I can't tell you how much uh, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Yeah. Even though it's not a ton of gear, it's still a huge part of the sound of your band. Cool. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Keep watching Premier Guitar for reviews, lessons, all that fun stuff, riff rundowns. So don't forget to check those out on PremierGuitar.com. Hey, everybody! Thanks for watching the latest rig rundown. Guess what? Every week we upload a brand new rig rundown to PremierGuitar.com a full week before it's available here on YouTube. So to get your gear fix as soon as humanly possible, go to PremierGuitar.com forward slash rig rundown. And while you're there, be sure to sign up to get an email notification so you're the first to know as soon as each week's new rig rundown is available. Cheers. See you soon.